Hey guys, it's October, which means Halloween. And that means candy everywhere. So today I'm making some delicious keto candy for those coconut lovers, almond joys and mellow cups. So let's get started. Welcome back. If you're new here, thanks for joining me. My name's Alicia and I'm a sous chef with a sweet tooth. And here we make delicious pastries and candy, many from my time as a pastry chef. And my goal is to make the best keto desserts possible. So if you enjoyed these recipes, please consider hitting the subscribe button, hitting the thumbs up and leaving me a comment. It all helps my channel grow and to bring you new keto desserts every Saturday. Today, Candy, it's my favorite time of year. I love October, I love Halloween. So if you're a coconut fan, you are going to love these candies. Most of these are gonna be going to my family because I'm not a huge coconut person, but I bet some of you guys are. So we're gonna start with baking the insides of our Almond Joys because those have to set in the refrigerator and chill for a while before we can coat them in some delicious Lily's Milk Chocolate. So I picked up this silicone candy mold. You can literally use any kind of pan. You can just make this into a big bar and cut it into squares, super easy. I, of course, am a little bit extra and have to make them look just like mini bite-sized Almond Joys. But that's always an option, super easy. Just layer it all out, put a layer of chocolate on top, chop it up, you're good to go. This is a super simple recipe. A cup of allulose out of my big, tub of allulose that I just bought. This isn't even all of it. It's a big box. This is not super precise. We're not even going to use all this syrup. We're just going to add this to our coconut to make it nice and sticky in order to make it into little squares so that we can dip it in chocolate. So I'm doing a cup of allulose and a quarter cup of water. So I'm just going to fill this halfway. The amount of water really isn't important because what you're doing here is boiling the water out and getting the sugar a little caramelized. So it's not super important that you measure exactly quarter cup. It's gonna turn this on medium. Whoop, forget I'm not on a regular burner here. I need a spatula. <laughs> you don't really have to stir this. I just get paranoid that it's gonna like burn on the bottom or something. Whoop. And then the pot is too small for this burner. The only other ingredient is a little bit of vanilla extract. I'm gonna put one tablespoon in here. I already have my almonds counted out. I'm doing 40 individual little candies. So I have 40 almonds here. And I already have my unsweetened shredded coconut weighed out. You wanna have this all ready because it's gonna go really fast. Once the sugar is at the right consistency, you're pouring it into the coconut and you're mixing it up to make like a sticky coconut and you're gonna put it in your molds. After your initial stir, I wouldn't even worry about stirring it at all. We're just waiting for this to come to about 260 degrees. These laser thermometers are very handy. I'll put the Amazon link down below for you. This thing has like been a lifesaver with all the chocolate tempering and the sugar work I've been doing. It's so easy. Okay, hey, we're almost there. If you don't have a thermometer, you just want like it to be pretty thick and syrupy like. That's when you know it's ready to go. So we're at 160. I'm just gonna, sorry, 260. We're gonna pour some of it in here. We're not gonna need all of it. We're just gonna give it a stir. You want it a nice sticky coconut. And depending on the coconut you get, the carbs may be different. This is a Thrive coconut and it's less than the one I got at Walmart. So I don't know why, but these are a lot smaller threads of coconut. The shreds at the Walmart were like this big, which makes it actually kind of harder to do this. So you want it nice and sticky. And once it cools, it'll harden. We got maybe like a couple tablespoons left. I'm just gonna put a little bit more in. This was actually an accident that I experimented with back when I did my cocoa almonds. I had that liquid left and I'm like, ooh, this is nice and sticky. I wonder if I can put it in some coconut and make Almond Joys. And I did. So then I had to do some testing on portions and all that and macros for you but it turned out awesome that day that I did it. If you haven't seen my cocoa almond video, I'll link that up there for you. Super good, my mom loved them. So I'm just gonna take a teaspoon and pour it into each one. We're gonna pat this down really good and then we're gonna top it with an almond. Probably would help to spray your teaspoon with a little coconut oil or avocado oil. I didn't think about that until now. 
You try to get them as even as possible, but it's not that big a deal. You gotta push them all down really good. Kind of pack them in like a bar that are a little light packed. You can add a little bit more to. Last little bit of coconut. See if it needs any anywhere. Press it down. Now if you want to be really precise like I like to be, you can push them down with an offset spatula and get it all nice in there. I'm anal though when it comes to making desserts. You do want it nice and packed though. Helps stay together that way. When you go to dip them in chocolate. Okay, those look good to me. So carefully dip your almond in that sugar. Put it right on top. First time when I tested this, I put chocolate down, but that's just like an extra step. The sugar's not too hot now, but you need the almond to stick to something. It's easier this way. My fingers are getting a little sticky. You know, all our little almond joys are ready. If you don't care about them looking like almond joys, you can literally just chop up almonds, mix them with the coconut, mix in the sugar, put them in a pan, cover them in chocolate. Easy peasy but I want them to look like I'm eating an Almond Joy, just like everybody else gets to eat on Halloween. These gotta go in the fridge to set up completely before we can dip them in chocolate. Now on to our next recipe, the Mellow Cups. So I have 12 cupcake liners in my cupcake tin. It just makes it easier. You can use any kind of silicone mold though, and it'll work. I just want them to look like Mellow Cups. So I have three and a half ounces of Lily's milk chocolate chips here, and I have a half an ounce here to temper our chocolate. I have many videos on tempering. I'll link some up throughout the video. My hot cocoa bombs, that was like the biggest tutorial. It was like a 20 something minute video on how to do this, but I'm using a little bit of coconut oil in here. I'm just gonna heat it 50% power, 30 second interval till it gets above 90 degrees and then we're gonna temper it and get it down to about 88. Okay, so I put all those in and then it was 85 and I put it back in the microwave and now it's 97. So I gotta keep adding milk, chocolate chips until it gets down to 88. Even I mess up sometimes. Oops, add a little bit at a time. Okay, we're at 88. Or nice and silky smooth. The only thing is, is if you add too much extra chocolate, you might have to add more coconut oil just to make it like runny again so that it's easier to work with. I'm going to add a teaspoon into each one of these, kind of spread it out a little bit all on the bottom along the side. I have a couple different videos on this too. I made Reese's Cups last year. I'll link it up there for you. And make sure you buy new cupcake liners if you happen to be like mine were and they were all smushed. It makes it much easier when your liners are new because I had a bunch of just indentations and it was just a pain in the butt to get them smooth, nice looking. Just make sure you're in all the ridges as best you can and pretty decently the way up. You can see they're not like really in the ridges here. Push up into the ridges. That's why you need kind of a lot on the bottom. The top you can have a nice thin layer of chocolate. The bottom you want pretty sturdy and full of chocolate. So I found the best technique, put it in the bottom, spread it out and just swirl it all the way around with your one teaspoon measuring spoon. Get all that chocolate really good and thick around there and then go back and make sure there's no holes on the bottom. Did that pretty quick. They don't gotta be perfect. They're just for you and your family. We're not packaging and selling them. So I'm gonna pop these into the refrigerator and then we just gotta make the filling, which is relatively easy. So we'll get onto that next. We're gonna be remelting this chocolate because we need to cover the mellow cups. So clean off your spoon so it's not just one big clump on there and set it aside for now. Yeah, on to the marshmallow filling. This is very similar to the last recipe because we're doing allulose and water again and we're cooking it to 260 degrees, but we're gonna pour it into a whipped egg white. Have a container to catch your yolk. It's only one, so you can do it right into the bowl. Save your yolk. I'm gonna have a really delicious recipe coming up to use your egg yolks, so save them. You want that at room temperature. So we're gonna get that ready, and then a half cup of allulose to a pot, and two tablespoons of water. I always put it around the edge because you don't want allulose to crystallize. And doing the same thing, we're gonna add a half teaspoon of vanilla extract to these egg whites when the time comes. Oh, and you need your coconut ready too. Two tablespoons or 15 grams. Now I know some of you guys may be wondering where the nougat is. And I figured this out 
when I was testing nougats. I have not been able to figure it out. It's really frustrating because I've done like 15 tests and none of them have gotten like solidified into like a nougat that you could like actually bite into. But someone mentioned on a Facebook group a replacement for mallow cups because they love mallow cups. And I'm like, you know what? I've never actually had a mallow cup, but some of the testing I did, the filling was very similar to like a marshmallow. So I actually went out and bought mallow cups and I did kind of try a little bit of it. I didn't really want to, but I literally have never had a mallow cup in my life. So I had to taste it in order to recreate it. And I didn't even know there was coconut in it. And then duh, I should have read the ingredients, but it's basically just a marshmallow cream. Keep a close eye on this. Whoa, we're at 260. You want your egg whites at stiff peaks before you pour this in. And so they're at soft peaks. A little bit more. There you go. If you don't talk while you're doing this, start your egg white when your sugar's at 230. We caught it right when it was getting to 260, so we're good now. You want this on high speed and you want to get it right in between the bowl and beater going down the side of your bowl. You want to stream it in very slowly and then you're just going to whip this until it cools. Okay, it's almost cooled. We're going to add a half a teaspoon of vanilla and whip it the rest of the way until it's about room temperature. Okay, it's about 74 degrees, which is fine. Now this is a lot thicker than the marshmallow cream we made. Like it's not even coming off the beater. This is a much more stable cream. I'll leave some out on the counter and see how it reacts. I didn't leave any out on the counter in testing, but I'm sure you can probably use this as a frosting for cupcakes and such. It'd be delicious. We're just gonna add in our two tablespoons of coconut. Just mix that in. Unsweetened coconut. Shells are nice and set up. I'm gonna put your piping bag over your hand. Try not to make a mess. Scoop it in there. Oh, and I had my boyfriend try the mellow cup and my cup side by side, and he said it tasted the same. So don't overfill your bag like me. <laughs> Take some of that off. Always refill. Fill up your molds. Say go around the edge first, make a good line. A little bit more. I have enough just for 12. First time I only made six, I had a bunch left over and then I was making random tests. <laughs> now you want a nice smooth top on top of the mallow cup. Give it a little swoosh with your mini offset spatula. The better you pipe, the easier it is at the end. Okay, we're just gonna put these into the refrigerator while we temper some more chocolate. Our favorite part. Now I have my chocolate that I had already tempered. Four ounces is what is put in the macros because I believe that's pretty much what you use for the bottom of your mellow cups. So I have this little bit here. We're gonna add two more ounces of milk chocolate to this and temper that. And you're probably still gonna have chocolate left over. It's always easier to work with more chocolate than less chocolate. Almost forgot the coconut oil. About a teaspoon. I almost said tablespoon. It's not a tablespoon. That's also in the macros. It might be a little bit higher in fat and calories than you're actually gonna consume because you're not gonna consume all this chocolate. And I found that tempering in like a Pyrex glass measuring cup takes a lot longer. Just so you guys know, I switched to just a little plastic cup. It doesn't take as long. Glass holds onto the heat more, I think. So I was at 95 and only added six more chips and we're at 88. So that's a gauge for you, but it all depends on your container and how warm it is in your house and tons of other things. Teaspoon again, go around and around and around. Make sure you connect with the chocolate. Might be better with this kind of spoon. It's easier if you go around the edges. Might get a little bit of mallow in your chocolate up there. Hey, okay, all our mallow cups are covered. There's actually probably more filling in these than an actual mallow cup. And each one of these is 2.25 grams of net carbs. I'm gonna pop these into the refrigerator and we gotta get on to covering our almond joys. 
Okay, we're gonna start first with popping out all our little Almond Joys. Last night I did this one by one, getting them out of here as I was dipping them. Kind of a pain in the butt. So I'm gonna get them all out to start with. That way we can just dip and go real quick. Ah, little Almond Joys. My mom is gonna be so excited when I bring all these over to her. I do love silicone molds. They make it so easy. This will also be linked below. I just bought it purposely to make candy bars or candy bites. I'm gonna put these in the refrigerator and we're gonna temper nine ounces of Lily's milk chocolate to dip these in. Okay, tempering again. This is nine ounces, so a tablespoon of coconut oil. Let the process begin again. If you wanna be precise about your macros, when you go to temper, weigh out and keep track of how much you put in. That way, after you're done dipping all of your Almond Joys, you can weigh out how much chocolate you have left and you can get an accurate measurement on how much chocolate you actually used. I suggest starting with half ounces at a time and as you get closer, just add a chip or two. I took it to 100, so this is gonna take a while. Okay, we're at 88, so time to grab out our Almond Joys. The easiest way to do this, forks. I bought a dipping kit once. It was just a complete waste of money. Just use forks. It works just as good. Okay, the best way to do this is to take your Almond Joy, do it upside down, because you want that on top, and then flip it over. Tap, tap, tap. Scrape the bottom off. All the excess, put it back down. You can even do a little swirl on top, make it look like a real Almond Joy. So upside down, scrape it, and down on the paper. Just keep going until you got all 40 little Almond Joys. We are almost at the end here. Just want to mention if you don't tap off enough of the chocolate, you may end up not having enough. You got to get a really nice thin coat on every chocolate bar. I'm still probably going to have about an ounce of chocolate left, but if you don't have even an ounce left, it gets a lot more difficult at the bottom of the chocolate. Like I still have quite a bit of chocolate down here, but it becomes more and more difficult the less chocolate you get. And my candy bars are starting to get soft, so got to quicken up here. And then I'm just going to weigh out this chocolate. And you don't have to put almonds on this, and you can do dark chocolate. That would be a Mounds bar. It's also another option. You can also use semi-sweet chocolate chips if you want. This is where most of your carbs come from, is the chocolate. It's two grams per half ounce. So if you use the Lilies and you use nine ounces, they're 1.5 for each little chocolate bar. Gonna pop these back into the refrigerator to chill for a little bit, and then we'll be back to try all these. Hey, time to get our mellow cups out of the cups. Now obviously clean them up a little bit or you can leave them right in the cups. They look good. They're definitely bigger than mellow cups. I don't think they use a standard cupcake mold. We got our mellow cups. Time to try one. Hmm. Breaks like a mellow cup. Definitely more filling. Hmm. That's a mellow cup. Sweet, soft, fluffy, a little bit of coconut. And messy. Kind of like a mellow cup. Those were delicious. Now on to our almond joys. They look so cute. And we got 40 of them and it only took me to make these probably about an hour not even and you got 40 mini almond joys they look so cute with the little almond on top my mom is gonna love these but i gotta show you what they look like when you bite into one it tastes like an almond joy so good. Sweet coconut almond on top, just like Almond Joys. I hope you guys get to make these recipes for yourself for Halloween. That way you are not tempted to eat those Almond Joys that your kids get or you see in the grocery store. But if you prepare yourself, make some Mellow Cups, some Almond Joys, my peanut butter cups and my Twix bars. Let me know in the comments below what your favorite Halloween candy is. Don't forget to check out my Amazon links and the blog link to the full written recipe in the description box below. 
Give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And as always, I'll be back with many more keto dessert recipes. Bye guys. Bye guys.